just like lung cancer doesn't develop right after you smoke a cigarette, it takes years to develop, so does it. And uh, as we mentioned, the, that German pathologist Heiko Brock said that Parkinson's doesn't begin the brain. He said that because some of the earliest symptoms of, of Parkinson's, anosmia, which is the fancy term for loss of smell and constipation, uh, are outside of the brain, likely. Uh, concept of, these could also be due to uh, brain effects, but possibly uh, due outside the brain. And that we know, for example, that many of the environmental risk factors that we're going to talk about today are inhaled. They come in through the nose door of the brain, bypassing the normal protective me mechanisms that the brain has to protect itself from environmental toxins, for example, that we ingest. And so loss of smell and constipation develop years before the classic tremor does. And there are other uh, parts of the brain uh, and other symptoms that develop early on in the disease, including abnormal sleep, uh, anxiety, and depression. Um, as I said earlier, uh, studies have linked air pollution uh, to Parkinson's disease, and as we're going to learn later today, to Alzheimer's disease as well, probably with even stronger evidence. And to me, this uh, highlights the spread of Parkinson's disease, initially uh, rising most rapidly in Europe, where air pollution first began, then in North America, now more recently into Asia and into Africa. If you look at the brains of uh, people with Parkinson's disease, the parts of the brain that are most affected early in the disease are the smell centers, which are located just behind the, your eyes, above your nose. And those are affected in 95% of individuals with Parkinson's disease. And again, are among the earliest parts of the uh, brain that are affected with the disease, giving us suggestions that the disease may be getting, be getting there and perhaps uh, due to inhaled particles. Also possibly less robust evidence that Parkinson's disease may begin in the gut. I told you that constipation uh, is one of the earliest features of Parkinson's disease. And there are uh, certain pesticides, many of which are known to be nerve toxins. Many target the energy producing parts of cells called mitochondria that have been linked to Parkinson's disease. One of these pesticides, the most offending agent is a pesticide called paraquat. It's considered the most toxic herbicide ever created when it was developed in the 1950s. It kills the weeds that Roundup doesn't. It's been used to commit homicide and suicide. It more than doubles the risk of Parkinson's disease. And over 30 countries, including China, have banned uh, this chemical because of its toxic effects. But the United States has not. Uh, indeed, uh, just last year, the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency reauthorized the use of Paraquat. Uh, Paraquat is found on numerous crops, including cotton and grapes throughout the United States. Uh, and use of the Paraquat has more than doubled uh, to over, I think, 15 million pounds in just the last five years, according to the U.S. Geological Survey. The Michael J. Fox Foundation and others are suing to block the reauthorization of Paraquat, but we continue to use a pesticide from the 1950s that over 30 countries, including China, have banned. Not only do we continue to use it, we use it in increasing amounts, and it's found uh, near uh, almost all of us. Another widely used chemical is something called trichloroethylene. Uh, for those of you who like chemistry, this is what trichloroethylene looks like. It's a really, really simple compound. It's got six atoms, one hydrogen, two uh, carbon atoms, and three chlorine atoms. It's been used in everything from decaffeinating coffee to degreasing to dry cleaning. In the 1970s, more than two pounds of this chemical was produced per American in the United States. Uh, up to 10 million people have worked with trichloroethylene. If you worked in the semiconductor industry in Silicon Valley, if you've worked as a rocket scientist, if you've worked uh, in painting, if you've worked in degreasing, if you've worked as a mechanic, uh, you've all likely been exposed to trichloroethylene. A study from Italy found that three quarters of uh, the Italian population uh, sampled had, uh, had trichloroethylene found in the urine of people with the disease. Well, why does that matter? Uh, well, first of all, it's ubiquitous. It's found in everything, found in carpet cleaners, found in, used to be found in whiteout. If you drink Senka in the 1970s, you were exposed to trichloroethylene. Um, the reason it matters is because it increases, associated with it, 500% increased risk of uh, Parkinson's uh, disease. This is work from my colleague, Dr. Sam Goldman and uh, Caroline Tanner, now at UC San, University of California in San Francisco. They looked at twins, and they looked at twins who were exposed to trichloroethylene or TCE, either through their occupation 
or their hobbies. And then they looked at the uh, unexposed twin and they found that twins who were exposed to the chemical had a 500% increased risk of developing Parkinson's disease, a 500% increased risk. Almost nothing uh, increases your risk of developing the disease by 500%. Uh, um, and th they said because of the widespread use of, of uh, trichloroethylene and related chemicals that the potential public health implications are substantial. They also pointed out a, a, an important finding is that the time lag between exposure and diagnosis of the disease can be 10 to 40 years. So just like with smoking and lung cancer, you don't smoke a cigarette and develop lung cancer the next day. You don't work with trichloroethylene one day and develop Parkinson's the next day. It can happen 10 to 40 years later. You may have long since forgotten that you may have been exposed to it, or you may have never been aware of your exposure uh, to the chemical in the first place. Trichloroethylene uh, also causes cancer. Uh, I'm a Parkinson's specialist, so I focus on uh, its role in Parkinson's disease, but it's been well, well known to cause cancer, including kidney cancer, renal cell carcinoma, liver cancer, non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, multiple myeloma, and uh, prostate cancer. The World Health Organization says that TCE is carcinogenic to humans. The Department of Health and Human Services says TCE is known to be a human carcinogen and the U.S. Environmental Pro uh, Protection Agency says TCE is carcinogenic in humans by all routes of exposure. <clears throat> TCE, uh, ubiquitous in the 1970s, as I indicated, is still with us today in the United States, and global use of trichloroethylene is increasing, including in uh, China, where rates of Parkinson's disease are rising rapidly. Over half of the most toxic sites in the United States, called so-called Superfund sites, are contaminated with trichloroethylene. Here's a map of them. They're found uh, throughout the United States. Beyond these Superfund sites, the most toxic sites, the state of Michigan alone, the state of Michigan alone has over 1,000 sites contaminated with trichloroethylene. And why does this matter? Trichloroethylene matters because it can contaminate the air. You can inhale it. It readily evaporates, and that's why it's often used, uh, often heated and used as a wonderful degreasing agent. It also contaminates up to 30% of the groundwater of the United States. TC contaminates up to 30% of the groundwater in the United States. Uh, often anything, anyone from dry cleaners to the military to industrial plants will inappropriately dispose of TC by directly pouring it into the ground, by putting it into vats that leak uh, over the times to something called the Valley of the Drums in Louisville, uh, Kentucky. And then the TCE leaks into the soil under the groundwater and forms underground plumes that can then migrate a mile or more uh, away from the contaminated site. And because TC readily evaporates, it can enter people's homes, schools, and workplaces undetected. I'll say that again. TCE can form underground plumes and from the underground plume, evaporate from the underlying groundwater into people's homes, schools, and workplaces undetected. Many of you have had your basements tested for radon because radon can evaporate from soil and increases your risk of causing lung cancer. TCE can also evaporate from uh, underground, from soil and groundwater and increase your risk of developing Parkinson's disease and cancer. Um, this isn't... Uh, Academic, this is actual real. Uh, I live here in suburban Rochester and 15 minutes from where I live, actually where I was biking uh, yesterday on a rare nice day in Rochester in March, uh, is a town called Victor, New York. And Victor, New York uh, used to get their water or got their water from a fresh water supply from Modoc Springs. And uh, the New York Department of Environmental Conservation started testing fresh water supplies of uh, water and found that in Victor, New York, that Modoc Springs had been contaminated with trichloroethylene and that people had been drinking TCE contaminated water uh, in their homes and never knowing about it. In addition to drinking TCE contaminated water, there was an underground plume uh, formed from where TCE was disposed of at a, a sand and gravel pit. And you can see all the people in gray on the right hand portion of this graph were living in homes that um, where this underground plume uh, had been formed and were potentially exposed by means of indoor air pollution uh, to TCE and uh, were largely uh, unaware of this for the years in which it was happening. 
So uh, TCE, uh, I mentioned that Paraquat's been with us since the 1950s. TCE's been around with us since at least the 1920s and not the 1910s. And it's uh, health dangers have been known for quite some time. This is an uh, article uh, written by Dr. Kerry McCord uh, from my hometown of Cincinnati, Ohio. Dr. McCord was a physician working for Chrysler Corporation, which you can imagine had many uses for uh, trichloroethylene, but he was concerned about the toxicity of trichloroethylene. I'm just going to read you a little bit of his letter again in the Journal of the American Medical Association. He says, promotional activities seeking the extension of industrial uses of trichloroethylene frequently fail to disclose the toxic nature of this chemical and the practical dangers that may attend its use. He then conducted a series of experiments in which he put TCE on the skin of rabbits and they died and have rabbits inhale a TCE and they die. And then he concluded that any manufacturer contemplating the use of trichloroethylene may find in it many desirable qualities. That's a great degreasing agent. Two, in the absence of closed systems of operation, he may find in this solvent the source of disaster for ex exposed workmen. Dr. McCord wrote this letter in the Journal of the American Medical Association in 1932. We have known for over 90 years about the toxic effects of trichloroethylene, yet we still permit its use. We have over uh, half of the most toxic sites in the United States contaminated with this chemical and thousands, tens of thousands of other sites across the country contaminated with this chemical that's a known carcinogen and known to be associated with a 500% increased risk of developing Parkinson's disease. 